My name is Dolores Kramer, and this session is on the state software redesign and is intended for the Auditor of State's Office, the Local Government Service section of the Auditor of State's Office, as well as independent auditors, and may also be useful for districts as well. Some of the things we are going to go over today are some of the questions that were submitted to us by the Auditor of State's Office. We're going to be answering those questions. We're going to be doing a report comparison, the classic reports to the redesign reports by name. We're going to be going over custom report creation, how to modify current reports, the reports options page. I will be showing you a printable options page and during the course of the demonstration within the user interface, we will actually create a reports options page for our reports. How to rename reports, to customize your reports so they have additional detail in the name. Sharing reports, the ability to email report definitions to either yourself for use in other districts or to other auditors for their use. Also the ability to filter for information, to drill down using the grids and being able to create reports from those grids. Some of the questions that we had come from the Auditor of State's Office and the Local Government Service section of the Auditor of State's Office. The system is web-driven, so there is no need for any simulation software to access the various districts' data. You'll be given a username and a password, and you can access that from any secure location. We'll be going over the printing options. They are easily downloadable. There is no longer the necessity for an FTP or FileZilla or Kermit, and we'll be going over that later in the presentation when we're actually in the user interface. Many of the reports have various output options, including PDF, Excel, Excel data, plain text, HTML, as well as many others. There is a modern grid format in the user interface, which makes finding data easy, sorting, filtering, creating a report of the data on your screen is extremely simple, and we'll be going over some examples of that as well. Easy to get reports for certain reporting periods, whether that's the month you're in or any month in your audit period. There is no need for any backup directories. You will be in a live database in a read-only access. The auditor estate will need to request access for each district you work with. You will be given a URL, a username, and a password for each district. Access be can be given directly from the district or from the ITC. You will need to ask the district how to proceed, as each district may handle this differently. Once a username and password is given, it should be able to be reactivated for the next year to be used again. Because it is web-based, the Auditor of State's Office, Local Government Services, independent auditors will be able to access the district's URL at any time from any secured network, as I mentioned previously. There are many canned and template reports written by SSDT to simulate the reports that you have used in the past. We'll discuss a little bit further later on in the presentation the difference between a canned report and a template report. There is a report crosswalk that has been sent to AOS and to LGS administrators. Some of those will be reviewed within this presentation and I will also provide you a link to a full list of the SSDT reports and their corresponding redesign report names. Your reports can be tweaked and new ones written. You can personalize your report and they can be emailed and uploaded for use in other districts. And we will go through an example of that and how to process that through the presentation. 
The district name that you are working in will appear in the top left hand corner of your screen along with your username that you have been given to use to log in. You will need to access both your USASR and USPSR separately. You will have two different URLs as they are separate systems. Common, a common implementation has been to use the same username and password for both systems, but that is totally up to you and to the district and the corresponding ITC. One of the questions that we had was about the reports options page. Here is just an example of a reports options page, and I will show you this actually when we're in the user interface as we process a report. But this reports options page does show you who generated it, when it was generated, the report parameters, such as the size, orientation, the output file, the name of the report, and then the query parameters, your beginning and ending date, so you know what this report was for. We have had questions about what districts are currently live on redesign, what ones are in implementation, and at what point are they in that process of migration. This is a current map of the districts that are either live on redesign or those that are in the way for migration of redesign, which is happening during the July 1, 2019 to December 31st, 2019 timeframe. This map does change frequently, actually almost daily, but I did want to give you at least a brief look at where we're at. Those that are in red, italicized, are the districts that are live on redesign. So those are a definite. The ones that are in black are the ones that are in the implementation stage for wave four. This is a link to the SSDT wiki page that is updated semi-monthly after our update meetings that changes the status of the districts from migration to live. It also lists the point in time that the district went live. So you will be able to look at this and know exactly when the district that you are auditing, when they migrated, whether they have a full year on redesign during your audit period, or if they were on classic and migrated to redesign during the audit period. We've been asked about the reports and if the same reports are available in redesign as they were in classic. We're going to be going over a list of reports in this PowerPoint that were specifically asked for by Auditor Estate or LGS. And also I will provide you a list of, a more detailed list of all of the SSDT reports and their classic names and their a crosswalk to the redesign names. The app sum is now named appropriation summary. As you can see, we are no longer limited to the six character abbreviation as we were in classic. So your redesign reports or names are going to be more indicative of what the actual report name is. Your fin debt is your financial detail. Your fin sum is your cash summary. Bud lead is your budget account activity. Check pay is your disbursement detail. The REC EXP is the reduction of expenditure ledger. Your PO detail PO is your purchase order detail. Your PO detail all is also your purchase order detail. You will just select different parameters. The REC TRN is your fund to fund transaction ledger. Your TRAN ADV is your transfer advance summary. RecLED is your receipt ledger report. Your RevLED is your revenue account activity report. These are some of the payroll reports that we were requested. The Ben Act is your benefit obligation by account. Ben Imp is your benefit obligation by employee. Your pay reports, July 1 and July 2, 
both will just be your pay reports. You will just select the specific payroll that you're looking for. The Wage Act is your wage obligation by account. These are the web links to the SSDT Wiki page, which is the crosswalk from classic report to redesign in your USASR, as well as your USPSR classic to redesign crosswalk. This will be a more complete list of the SSDT reports and their redesign counterparts. When you are generating reports or other places within the user interface, you can use date shortcuts. Now, of course, you can use the exact specific date if you wish, but you may find that these shortcuts are helpful in various places. So for the calendar year, January 1st of the current calendar year, you would use Y, and December 31st of that current calendar year, you would use R. You would use F for the first day of the current fiscal year and L for the last day of the current fiscal year. M would be the first day of your current month based on the current system date. H is the last day of the current month. P is for the first day of the current posting period. D is for the last day of the current posting period. And we'll explain a little bit later what that current posting period means. Q would be your first day of your quarter. U would be the last day of your quarter. T is for today. W is for the Sunday of the current week. And K is for the Saturday of the current week. There are many ways to retrieve data from the redesign system. The grid reports, you can actually bring up a grid from various places within the user interface. You can sort and filter that grid and you can actually get a report directly from the grid. There are canned reports. The canned reports are the more detailed reports that are specifically written by the SSDT. They are more detailed in their programming and they are not modifiable because of the data that they pull and how they bring that data in those canned reports took more programming and thus are not modifiable. The template reports, those template reports can be used as is, or they can be used as a basis for modifying the report to have more detail or bring in just specific information. The custom report writer, you can actually use the custom report writer to create your own report, or you can utilize it to modify your template reports or also bring in reports from the grid and modify them further. As I spoke of before, you do have the ability to email reports to other districts, to yourself for use in other districts, or to other auditors. And you're not actually emailing the report itself. You are emailing a report definition. So you bring that in and then it would generate the data from wherever you're using it. This is just a sample of a purchase order detail report. I brought this in just so that you can see that this purchase order detail report is very similar to the purchase order detail report that you had in Classic. It has all of the same information. I personally think that the format is much better in redesign and has a much better appearance and is easier to read. We have now switched to the actual user interface. So we can go through some of the features. What you are seeing on your screen now is what your login will look like for the user interface for whatever district you are in. This tells you that you are in the USAS application. You have the URL that you will be utilizing. We are in a demo for this presentation but it would actually tell you what district you are in and it would have their specific URL. You would enter your username and your password and you would log in.
the information that we are using within this user interface is annotated data. So it is scrambled for the demo purposes. So as you can see, as we've logged in, we are in USAS. We are in Cotton Demo School District. And where it shows here admin, it would have your username. In the upper right hand corner, you can see this is our current posting period. So for now, we are in July of 2019. If we were to generate a summary report, we would get information for July of 2019, which is fiscal year 2020. We're going to first look at some specific reports and how you might customize those reports. So we're going to go to reports and to report manager. And here I would like to explain what your options are. The first icon is to download this report. The second one is to view the report definitions. The third one is to edit this report and that's just editing the name or the description of the report. We can also tag this report and I'll explain that in a bit. We can also make it a favorite. So you could set a number of reports as your favorites and go to your homepage and those are the only reports you would see. You also have an X here, which would delete this report. The fifth one in, this is downloading your report definition. This is how you would share that report definition, either for yourself or for other auditors. This icon, this is going to be used within the district, and this is to share a report with a specific role within that district. This box is how we allow to make this report into our favorites. We'll just go ahead and click one here and go back to our home page. And you can see that these are four reports. This is the one that I just added, the 36. And these are the reports that I have said that those are my favorites. So instead of going to the report manager and searching through a multitude of reports that I may not use as an auditor, I could just go to my home page and have just the reports that I want. If I change my selection to show all reports, then I have all the reports just as I do within my report manager. So we're going to go ahead and go back here to our report manager. While we are here, I do want to show you uh, one additional feature. And this is the more button on the upper right hand side of our grid. This will allow you to add or remove columns from your grid. So you can customize the grids as you want. There's not as much in this reports grid, but we will do more of this when we are in the purchase order grid or the receipt grid so that we can narrow our grids down and generate a report with just the data that we would like to have. So we're going to look at a receipt ledger and to be able to narrow our large number of reports just to the ones that we're looking for. And you can see as that I have a previous saved set here. We utilize the percent sign. So we're going to put in the percent sign receipt and close it with a percent sign and this will give us just any report that has the word receipt in it. I will show you here are some grid options and I'm putting this on so that you can copy the URL at some other time if you want to come back to it. This does give you all of the various filtering options that you can use for a grid. So we're going to be utilizing some of these throughout this presentation, but you now have the URL that you can copy and look at on the SSDT wiki. So it will make you, it easier for you to find and filter the grids as you would like. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to download this receipt ledger report. And as I mentioned, this is our download option. 
And here we're going to have the options of the parameters that we want to generate this report. We can do it in a PDF, and these are the different formats that I've mentioned before. We have PDF, comma separated, tab separated, Excel, view, HTML table, field names, plain text, Jasper reporting, Excel data, as well as Excel field names. We're going to choose PDF for this presentation. We're going to have letter size and we're going to put this in landscape. As you can see, I have actually saved set an additional name. This would normally come up with just saying receipt ledger report, but I have added some additional here information here so that our report is going to actually have this full name on the report, Cotton Demo Schools, July 2019. We're also going to select this show reports option. This gives us our reports options page. If you remember the short date shortcuts that I showed you earlier, we're going to have a start date. This is our current period because it starts with P and our current period, which is D and our current period, as I mentioned, is July, 2019. We're going to have just the general fund, 001, one of the things that I want to point out is this S. When it says include fund with an S in the parentheses, that means that you can add additional funds to this same report by separating it with a comma. So we could add comma 006 and we would receive our general fund and our food service. If it does not have the S on the end, that means you are limited to either just one fund or just one full account code. So if it does not contain the S in parentheses, you are limited in that specific area to just one specific piece of data. There are multiple other options within other reports to give you the ability to generate multiple funds by using a wildcard. And we'll show that on one of the other reports that we're going to be doing. This filter name does allow you to enter a filter uh, this is mostly going to be for your um, district use. If I wanted to have a filter set up that would just give my food service director her just her food service accounts without entering anything else, I could actually set up a filter someplace else that named food service. Whenever she generates her report, she could just enter the name filter name food service and she would just get those reports that have the accounts that are particular to her filter. So we're going to go ahead and generate this report, see if we have any data in our demo for July. So here is our reports options page that we chose. It gives us the information that this report was generated by admin and for you it would have your name. The report was generated on, today's date is 928 and the time at which it was generated. Our parameters, the start date, the end date, the fact that we have general fund as our code and then our query parameters are the same as those. Because I chose that reports options page, it also shows me that our posting period was for July 2019 when we ran this report, the date and time that it was generated, and we have the extended title for our report that says Receipts Ledger Report Cotton Demo Schools, July 2019. This will be a really great feature for you if you are having to maybe finish up a school district and you are in another school district and you're having to generate some reports, you will be able to keep them separated and this is an easy way to do that. So you can see that these are all of our receipts for July of 2019 gives you the receipt number, the line number, the date, the type, which is receipt, the description, the full account code that was used, and the dollar amount and the grand total for that report. So we're going to go back to show you some of the canned reports and what the difference are. The ones that we just looked at in our report manager are template reports. Those are the ones that we can modify, we can change as we wish, 
but some of the canned reports, and there are fewer canned reports in on the budgetary side than there are on the payroll side, and I'll show you some of the differences. If we wanted to do a revenue and expenditures report, we would generate that from this drop down, and these four reports are our canned reports. As I mentioned, these take additional programming and they are not modifiable. The data that we are asking to be returned has to be programmed in a specific way. So this is our revenue and expenditure report. It is bringing in both the revenues and expenditures into one report. And these are the options that we have to create that report. I'm going to slip over here to my payroll so that you can see the number of canned reports that are in the payroll side. We have just as we do in the budgetary side, we have the report manager, which we can look at here in a second, but we also have all of these that are custom reports. And again, these reports are ones that are not modifiable, but they have taken additional programming to bring the data in that is needed in those reports. And we'll just real quickly bring up the reports manager in the payroll side you so you can see that it is exactly like the budgetary side just listing the various reports that are here these are all template reports that can be used as a as is or they can be used and modified so we're going to go back to our budgetary side and to our report manager here One of the things that I wanted to mention to you as I talked about modifying reports, anything that you see on the report manager that begins with the SSDT, those are the SSDT template reports. These reports were created based on the classic report. So the information that you are pulling from those reports will be exact or extremely similar to the reports that you had in classic that were the SSDT reports. Those that do not begin with SSDT are either reports that were modified from an SSDT report or maybe they were created from a grid or they were created from scratch in the district. We talked about looking at the report definition. And as you can see, I didn't mention this before, as you hover over each of these icons, it does tell you what these icons mean. So as I explained them before, they do have that explanation as you hover over them. So if you're not remembering what they are, they should be easily identifiable as you are hovering over them. If we click on the eye view, this is your open report definition in the detail report view. And we can see what parameters were chosen for that report. And you can see the filters that were configured for that report. This is a budget expenditure by month that was created by the district. These are the properties that were selected to create that report. And these are the filters that were utilized for the data that is being returned. So if there is any testing that you need to do on a report that was created by the district, or even if you want to verify the report parameters with an SSDT report, you have that option here. Now I'd like to show you how you can customize and filter some of the reports that are available. And we're going to go to our cash summary report. And we're going to again put in our percent sign and put in cash and end with a percent sign so it will bring up all of our cash summary reports. We're going to generate this cash summary report. And here's where we were talking about the singularity of reports or being of accounts or being able to add additional accounts. As you can notice, our fund SCC does not have an S in parentheses at the end. This means you can only enter one fund special cost center if you're using this parameter. For this example, we would like to show 
and then get a report for all of our 500 funds, all of our federal funds. So to do so, we enter the five and a percent sign, which is our wild card. We also want to make sure that we check box our show reports options. So we do have that options page that goes with our report. And for this purpose, we only want those active accounts. So we're going to put a T for true for active accounts. You also have the ability to, end, to add a fund and a separate special cost center here if you wish. We also have the filter name and then the total as of period. In here, if you are looking specifically for your audit period of June 30th, you do have the ability to enter that. If we leave it blank, we're going to get the current period. For the most part, you will probably be entering your 6.30 date in here because that's the period that you want your audit period. You're not going to be in a district within the audit period typically, so you would be entering the 6.30 of the year that you are auditing. So for this purpose, we're going to have our 500 funds. Uh, we have renamed, I've renamed our report. It would typically just say cash summary report but I have put in July 2019, 500 funds. And we have our report, which is the cash summary report, July 2019. And actually we're going to go back and change this because this we've chosen the option here. So I did want to add this 6.30 of 2019 for our total as of period, because as I mentioned, you're going to be in your next month or future months, and you really want to get your information for your audit period. So we've entered the 6.30 2019, and we are going to change our name to fiscal year 209. 500 funds. We're going to generate this report with our parameters of all of our 500 funds, all active, and we want our total as of period for 630 of 2019, which will give us our audit period. So we're going to bring up our report. This shows us that again, it was generated by admin when it was generated, the parameters were chosen, and you'll notice here the as of period says 630 of 2019. Also shows us that our query parameters that are as of period will be calculated for that period as of 630 of 2019. So this is giving you your data for your audit period ending fiscal year 2019. Now you will note that it says in the upper left hand corner that it says posting period July 2019. That's because that is when you actually generated the report, the date you generated the report. So it is going to be important for you to name your reports appropriately. This is your cash summary report for fiscal year 2019, all your 500 funds. And the information returned is for the fiscal year as of June 30th, 2019. This may be a tad confusing with your posting period, but that is the period that was current when you generated this report. But the data returned is for your fiscal year 2019 because we selected the as of period. We're now going to move from here into our grids. So the first one I want to show you is a nice little tip that I particularly really like because there were many times that I wanted to know specifically what was on a line item in my forecast. Or maybe I had an account and I wanted to know what line item that was showing on my forecast. 
So both in our revenue and expenditures, this is our expenditure grid. I went to core, accounts, and this brings up my fund, which is a new option for us. This will combine all of your funds together. So all of my 100 funds are showing in the fund. So even if I have multiple 100 fund, 001 funds, multiple 002, multiple 003, they are all lumped together here. And whether they are for certificate or reporting, again, you have the more dropdown where you can add some additional information if you wish to this grid. The cash account is the fund and special cost center. So you have your fund and your special cost center. You again have your more dropdown where you can add some additional information to your grid for filtering and sorting. The appropriations, obviously, your expenditures at appropriation level. And you have the same options on this grid as any of the other grids with looking at more detail for each item, for editing, deleting. Now you cannot delete an account if it has activity on it. And as a read-only user for an auditor, you would not have that option anyway. Also a report from the grid, and we are going to create some reports from our, a couple of our grids. So we're going to go to the expenditure, and we're just going to choose any expenditure, and we're going to look at the detail view. And what I really like is this addition of the forecast line number. So I can choose any account, expenditure or revenue, and I can tell whether that, account, what account, what line item on the forecast that account belongs to. And we'll just bring the revenue up as well. The same option is available here. And this shows us the forecast line item. While I'm here on this grid, I do want to show you one additional thing. This is available on all of the grids. And this is just a little detail view that comes up. This is available on any of your accounts, your purchase orders, your receipts, and it will give you some additional information on any line item that you just click on. And then you want to X out of that when you're completed. We're going to do just a little bit of filtering while we're on the accounts grids. And this may be something that you are interested in looking at. I have added my account valid to my grid. And I did that just by going to the more and going down and checking on the account active, our account valid, my apologies, the account valid. And we're going to sort for any that are false. So are there any accounts that we have in our expenditures that are not valid accounts? And it will return any account that is showing not valid. Now you may have reasons for having accounts that are no longer valid. With the new system, when you do an account change, it does not eliminate that account, but it makes it inactive. So we could look to see if any of these accounts are also inactive, which we have our active over here. So if we want to have check and see if we have any accounts that are active that are also not valid accounts, we would just add that filter to our grid. So we now have all of our active accounts, that those accounts may not be valid. And at this point, you could generate a report from this account and just get a nice report and print it off and look through those. Now we're going to go to one of the grids that I think that you probably will utilize for filtering and generating reports. We're going to go to the purchase order grid. This is actually one of the items that the auditor's office provided to us that you might actually be looking for and you want to filter and get a report of the information. And that is any purchase order that might be in excess of a specific dollar amount. Now we're going to use the dollar amount of in excess of $10,000. 
So we have the, these columns on our grid currently. We have the vendor number, the primary name, PO total, the PO number, the date, and we'll talk about this then and now. I've added this to my grid because I do want to show that to you as well. And if this purchase order is invoiceable or not. So we would like to look for any purchase order that is in excess of $10,000. And it did remember that I have entered this before. But we also only want those that are within our audit period. So to do that, and this is one of the queries that is in the page that I showed you earlier, and it is the between. So we want anything that is period between space 7 1 2018 comma 6 30 2019. So we want just our audit period, anything that is in excess of $10,000. And now our grid has been sorted to just those purchase orders that are within, that are in excess of $10,000 in our audit period. So we can generate our report, but it's going to show just as we have on the grid. And we may want one additional filter here. And if you'll see right next to the primary name, I'm just going to click in that box and you're gonna see this little carrot. What that has done is it's actually resorted my filtered data into alphabetical order. So it's going to give me all of my purchase orders that were to that specific vendor primary name together. So we're going to generate a report from the information that we have now filtered. And all we do is click on our report, gives us the option what type of format we want. We're going to leave it in PDF, letter. We're going to change the portrait to landscape, give us a little bit more space. And we want to change our report name. So we have a purchase order report in excess of $10,000 for fiscal year 2019. We also wanna make sure that we include our reports options page here so we do have that information to attach to our report. And at this point, we could generate the report from here. But we wanna to wanna to take one additional step. And I mentioned to you that you can save your own reports and that you can email those reports to yourself if this is a report that you know that you're going to be using in multiple districts and the dollar amount is something that you're going to be using, you can change that small piece later on if, if a district has a different parameter that you're looking for. But we're going to save this report and we're going to name it POs in excess of 10,000, FY 2019. And we're going to save this report. And I'll show you where that goes when we're finished with this process. It tells us that we have created that report. So we're going to go ahead and generate that report now as is. So pull our report up here. And it gives us our reports options page, it tells us again who generated it, when they generated it, the parameters, the template name. It tells us the posting period we ran it for, but remember we put dates in, so we're only going to get the dates within our posting period. Purchase orders report in excess of $10,000, FY 2019, and it has all of our vendors in alphabetical order, so we can easily see if we have had any vendor that has had multiple purchase orders in excess of $10,000, the PO number, the date, we could have taken off our then and now and our invoiceable from our grid, so we wouldn't have had this on our report, but I wanna use that, those columns for some additional demonstration for you. Also then can tell us our total dollar amount. So before we go back to our, to our report manager, and I'm gonna show you where our reports are there, I do want to take these filters off we might go, we'll leave our date in here because we still want just our audit period. But we want this then and now, and this is a new feature that was added in Redesign where when a, an invoice is processed and the invoice date is prior 
to the purchase order date, that purchase order will be automatically marked as a then and now purchase order. So if you are looking for any purchase orders that may have that criteria of then and now, you're going to put in T for true. And you can easily see that there were no then and now purchase orders within this audit period. Easy check. And if there were, you could actually generate a report again from this grid showing those purchase orders that were then and now, giving your PO number, your PO total, the name, and all of the information that you may need to pull that purchase order. So we're going to go now to our report manager because we want to look for the report that we generated that were in POs in excess of $10,000. And you can see I have a couple of them in here. That's why I changed the name just a little bit so that we could add them to them and you could see it. This gives you again the option to generate this report from here if you need to generate it again for some reason. It will also tell you if you need it for any particular reason that you want to know what your properties were or the filters, the filters that were there. And if you want to use this then for a following year, this would be a really easy place to go in, just make the modification of July 1, 2018 to July 1, 2019 to 2020. You can rename your report for fiscal year 2020, and you now have your report for your next audit period. But what I want to show you is the ability to be able to send this report to yourself in another district. So you've got this report, you know that you're going to be going to the second district that you're going to be working on, you want to generate the same report in that district. So where it says download report definition, we're going to just click on that. And you can see down here it says POs in excess and it has a JSON file. Now this is not the report itself, this is the report definition. So because of this file type, it's not something that you can open because it is a report definition. But what we're going to do is email that to ourselves so we can utilize it someplace else. So we're going to go to my personal email and we're going to compose an email here to myself. And we're going to tell it it is a PO report definition. And we're going to click on the attached file. And typically that will be in your downloads, wherever you store your purchase or, or your files on your computer. Mine are in my download files. It says PO in excess of 10,000. And we just click on open it. And it's going to bring it in. And I'm going to email that to myself. So now my report definition is here. And again, remember I can't open this because it's a file type. But I can download it. Now when I download it from here, it's going to give me a different extension. And we're going to consider that we are actually in a different district. And to do this, I'm actually going to need to, I think maybe I might be able to do this um, without deleting those. So I'm no longer in Cotton Demo Schools. I'm in Ash Local Schools. And I want that report definition and I want to be able to generate that report from there. So I downloaded that report from my email. I'm going to import that report. And yes, it did give me an additional extension so I can bring this in. So I select that from my download files. And once you have it on your computer, you don't have to continually download it for each district that you're in. It's going to be on your computer. So when you go to the other district, you just go to import reports and you select this report and it will bring it in. It's going to bring up and ask to tell you the report name, the port description. We're going to add in excess of 10,000 so we know what that is. 
And this is where I want to show you what we can tag these reports. We're going to put in AOS here and I'll show you where that goes. And we're saving that report. And you can see it just added it to my reports. And I now have the ability to generate this report in Ash Local Schools and have the exact same information, reports in excess of $10,000 for my audit period. And we're going to slide over here just a slight bit where it says tags. And as we can filter any of the other grids, we can filter our report grid, just as I did for the description. And I'm just going to put in AOS, and it just narrows the reports that I have to those that I have tagged as AOS. I can also favorite this report. And as I showed you before, that report then will be on my homepage. So I've clicked on my favorites and we'll go to the home page and you can now see that I have included that report in my home page under my favorites. So we're going to go to another grid here to show you some of the same things. And again, this is something that was asked. I, we asked the auditor's office and LGS, are there anything in particular that you would like to be able to do in the system? Are there, is there any filtering, any narrowing of searches that you would like to do? One of the other things that they mentioned to us was the ability to narrow receipts to a particular received from. So we're going to look for anything that was received from the county auditor. So we've just entered county. We might want to enter county auditor if we want to make sure that we just have the county auditor. Again, we want just our audit period. So we're going to have dot between 712018, comma, six thirty two oh one nine and it's going to narrow my results and my return to just receipts from the county auditor for within my audit period. And as we have with the other grids, we have the option to include more. And so maybe we want to know who created those receipts. So we can add our username and it will tell us who generated that receipt that went to the county auditor for just within our audit period and the receipt number. Since we don't seem to have any information here within the description, we're gonna take that off to clean up our grid just a little bit. And we're going to generate a report from this. This is one that I think might be a little more difficult to send to another district because they may put a different name in other than county auditor, they may have the particular county name. So this one may not be one that you would be able to do and send to someplace else, but you might easily be able to filter the grid and generate your report. So we wanna make sure that we remember to show our options page. We're gonna change our receipt report name to County Auditor, FY2019. I like to put them in landscape because it gives it a little bit more space if there's lots of numbers. And we now have a report with our reports options page telling us what we have, what the report is, when we generated it, and we have all of our information with the receipt number and the date and who it was received from. And what I did notice when we were looking at our report that we don't have any dollar amounts. That's my purchaser report. So I have gone to my more and I have added our total items. And we're now going to regenerate this report with our username, with our total. So 
So I am generating our report. And we're going to make this our county auditor. Show our reports options page and regenerate our report. And we now have a report showing our receipt number, the date received from, and our total, as well as a grand total for that report. One additional sort that might be advantageous. And this is also in the receipt grid. If you want to know those things that were receivables and if they match, you would still utilize the between and you might want just those things that were in the current fiscal year, but you just want the 90 days beyond. So you want September 30th of 2019. So we just want between July 1st of 2019 and September 30th, 2019. And we may not necessarily use, need our username. So again, we can remove any things that we do not want to include and add anything else that we might want to include. Add our description back in, see if we have anything in descriptions. And for this instance, which is our demo instance, we only have three items that were just in July, and that's because my July is my current period, and this demo only went up in through the end of July. But this would have given me anything that was in with that 90-day period that was received that would narrow then maybe down your receivables, and you could do the same thing with your payables and your invoice. We're going to go just briefly through some of the options just to show you where they're at. So in our core, we have our accounts. Most of the rest of this, you really won't need your posting periods. Just will show you what your current posting period is, but again, it shows it up here. It is in green, and it also tells you which periods are open, but not current. You also have your vendors. So if there's something you need to particularly look at in vendors, you would be able to sort and filter this grid as well. In your transactions, we'll go to transactions, you have an activity ledger. The activity ledger you may be able to utilize for filtering and getting a report. The activity ledger has every activity that has been processed whether it is a purchase order, an invoice, a disbursement, all of the activity for the budgetary side is included in this activities ledger grid. So you would filter by your type, which could be disbursement, invoice, PO, payroll, whatever the type is. And then from that, you would narrow your search for whatever particular piece of information that you are looking for. Again, you have the ability to go from the more drop down. This is one of the things that we were asked that you wanted the ability to look at anything that was created or done within a particular account within the audit period. So I have added to my more drop down the full account code. So to narrow our search, we want to include that in that full account code we're looking for. So for this purpose, we're going to look at our treasurer's office supplies. So our activity ledger grid has narrowed our search to just that account code. We want that between within our audit period. So again, it's going to be the dot between. So 712018 through comma 630 2019. And it has now narrowed our search to just 
the activity within our audit period within that account. And from this point, we may want to look at whether it was a purchase order you're looking for or invoices or any kind of disbursement, but you can see it has narrowed the type to only those things that are going to be in a budgetary account. We have no longer had our receipts or refunds because those would not occur within a budget account. We can search for anything that is amended. We can add some additional columns or subtract columns from our grid and generate a report. So hopefully this will answer the question and, and help you to narrow the search of what it is that you are looking for. We do have a date as well as an issued date. So you may want to narrow your search for the date for those between the date as well as the issued date. Because your purchase order issue date is going to be different than maybe your uh, invoice date or maybe your disbursement date. At this point, I have gone back to our PowerPoint. I have one final slide that I want to share with you. And these are some documentation links that I think might be of assistance to you. The first one is the USSR documentation. The second one is the USPSR documentation. If you're looking for specific information, how to do a particular task, the, these documentations are out there. Uh, you can also access them from within the UI. We will go back and I'll show you that quickly before we finish. But this is all on the SSDT wiki site. There's also some demonstration videos on the SSDT YouTube channel. These are both for the USPSR as well as the USASR. And there's some very helpful information in those videos. There's also some Fridays with Fiscal that were recorded demos that also could be very beneficial and helpful to you while you're in the process. So we're going to go back real quick here to the actual user interface so I can show you how to access this documentation from within the UI. So from anywhere within the UI, there is a help button over here with a little downward carrot. You just click on that carrot and it will give you documentation. And since we're in the USAS side, it will take you to the USASR documentation, the user guide. And from here, you can search for help in maybe the how to query in a grid or the date shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, whatever other pieces of information if you're struggling a little bit and just want to take a quick peek at some of the documentation that the users have.